How do you best measure the performance of a computer running Cubase? Well, that's certainly the question that myself and Dom Sigalis have been asking each other for the past few days. And that's because Dom is currently reviewing one of our 3XS audio workstations, in this case, a 16 core AMD behemoth that we call the Zen Station, and comparing its performance in Cubase to his existing computer. Now, there's no standard test anymore, not since Doorbench has moved over to using Reaper. But actually, if you're a Cubase user, you want to know how well your system performs using Cubase, not Ableton, not Studio One, Cubase. So let's see if we can come up with a fair test that will give you an idea of how much power that you may get if you upgraded. So if you had a, a benchmark result of your existing system, and then let's say 3XS tested all of their systems and started to publish them on the page for the computer, you could have a look at the Cubase bench test result and work out roughly how much of an increase you'd get. I say roughly because the audio interface, the buffer size and the ASIO guard settings will all have an impact on how much of an increase you get, but you'll get a good ballpark idea. This test should run using stock plugins, so you don't need anything else to do it. And it should also be indicative of a modern mix workflow. So a mixture of VST instrument, DSP plugins, and a smattering of audio thrown in there as well. So we think we've come up with something that's pretty fair now. So join us and have a look at how we've got on. I gave Dom some pointers and he came up with a test that he ran on both machines. But he sent me through an early cut of the video and I noticed that when he was playing back, there was a certain point that it kept glitching at. He sent me over his test and I had a look and there's a little bump just when the notes finish and then are re-triggered. And on a single soft synth, you're not really going to notice this. This is a tiny fraction of a percent and it's one soft synth or, you know, two or three that you might have running, but they're probably not playing the same notes and they're probably not playing all at the same time. Because of the way the bench test works, you li any little bump in performance will be amplified because you've got exactly the same thing with exactly the same notes, exactly the same time, and then amplified, you know, 30, 40, 50, or 100 times. So that little bump becomes a fairly big hill. And if that hill is big enough to cause a glitch in the audio, then that's exactly what you don't need. And it doesn't make it a fair test because it's not representative of an actual project. So I had a bit of a look at this and have given it a couple of tweaks. Now let's go and look at the test session. And first off, we've got some audio tracks. And this is what you're actually going to listen to when you're doing the test. And you want to listen out for dropouts in this playback. We've then got Retrolog and they're in a folder. And it's called Duplicate Me because that's exactly what you need to do. So it's an instance of Retrolog 2. And it's running a multiband compressor and it's running Revelation. So the idea here is that you duplicate this channel. It's playing 10 notes of polyphony. And this was the main change that I did to Dom's project to even it out and make it a bit fairer, was just to stagger the start points of the notes and then the overlap here. Um, and that got rid of the sudden spike in performance that, again, wasn't representative of a real life session. The other thing I need to note is when you are going to play back this to listen for glitches, make sure you swap onto a stereo out channel or that you're on a channel and you disable the monitoring because you don't want that monitoring to be uh, having an effect on the processing. 
So, um, there we go, and then we'll play it back. And as there's only one instance here, um, we're going to have no problem doing that. And then you'd simply duplicate the track. Duplicate it again and keep going. And every so often, stop and then play back. And if you get a smooth playback, then you are good to go and add more instances. If you do get a dropout, then simply delete one instance and then play back, see if it will go smooth. Um, and then that sort of will be about your point. Now, best practice here would be to then save the session and then reopen it and then play it back because that's going to give Cubase time to just load balance all the plugins again. So down to stereo out and then play back and listen for those glitches. Again, the buffer size and the ASIO guard settings will have an impact on this. Dom's done all his testing at 32 samples, which is the lowest buffer that his processor can handle. And I'd advise you to do something similar. It's also worth running the test at 512 samples. This result will give you more of an idea of the raw performance of a system and will have less of an impact of the audio interface as it would do at super low buffer sizes. It's also noted that the test is cross-platform, so you can compare PC and Mac systems both running Cubase Pro. Once you've finished duplicating tracks and you are happy that you've gone as far as your system can go without glitching during the playback, then you want to make a note here of the number. So this channel number will be your benchmark at that buffer setting. Um, and that's what we have got to make note of because 64 and 32 sample buffers will be producing slightly different results. Dom kindly re-ran the tests with the new project that I sent him. And actually these figures were a lot more like we were going to expect. And the processor load is extremely high. All cores loaded at the same time to a very, very high degree before it starts to glitch. So that's exactly what you do need in an audio system and knowing the reliance that it is possible for the test to generate that. Okay. So 46 channels, we get a dropout on the i9. Okay, so 83 channels, we get dropouts with the AMD. So Dom's test was still valid um, because it's exactly the same test that was performed on both computers. And actually, when you look at the percentage difference between the two results, it's fairly similar because all we did was unlock the power that was hidden behind that little bump in the CPU performance. And there you have it. This is a standard test for anyone who runs Cubase Pro. We are looking at doing one for all versions of Cubase, a universal test. But right now, let's just concentrate on Cubase Pro. So it'd be really interesting if you want to download the test. The link is in the description. And please comment with your numbers and your system that you're running. And let's see if we can get an idea of how much Cubase processing performance there is um, on various systems. So thank you very much for watching. If you've got any other comments or questions, please leave us a comment and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, we'll see you for another video again soon.